Good afternoon, Attorney Ray and classmates. Our group will be discussing about the Build Better More, Moving Towards Better Infrastructure. Here is an overview of the Philippine Infrastructure Flagship Projects, or the IFPs. The IFPs are game-changing, transformative, and urgently needed infrastructure projects of the national significance that aim to showcase the overall Build Better More program. According to President Ferdinand Marcos Jr., through our Build Better More flagship program, we have placed infrastructure development as the pinnacle of our vision for an equitable, prosperous, and resilient Philippines by 2024. As you can see on the map at the side, there are 194 high-impact IFPs to spur and accelerate economic growth across the archipelago. 72 of those are in Luzon, 25 are in Visayas, 34 in Mindanao, and 37 in Interregion, and 26 projects nationwide. A brief history context of the BBM. The Build Better More Infrastructure Program implemented by the Marcos Administration from the year 2022 to year 2028. BBM builds upon BBB, or also called Build, 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 by past President Rodrigo Duterte, carrying over 77 projects, and initiating 123 new ones. BBM emphasizes better and more, focusing on inclusivity, sustainability, and regional development beyond Luzon. This map from the Metro Manila Logistics Improvement Program shows the 11 bridges that will be constructed in the area to provide alternative linkages between major thoroughfares and increase the number of usable roadways that would decongest traffic in EDSA and other major roads in Metro Manila. Three of those are already completed, Binondo and Intramuros Bridge, Estrella and Pantaleon Bridge, Santa Monica and Lawton Bridge. Three of those are ongoing design and build contract, and there are five for the proposed bridges project. The Philippine High Standard Highway Network Program aims to increase the country's high standard highways, expressways, from 523 kilometers to 1963 kilometers based on HSH master plan phases 1 and 2 so the government will continue to address traffic congestions along vital road networks in the country particularly in highly urbanized areas through projects under the master plan on high standard highway network development here is the luzon spine expressway network program it aims to reduce the travel time between ilocos and bicol from 20 hours to just 9 hours expanding the country's highways and expressways network will elevate over-concentration of population and development in the urban areas and will give way to regional development. Here is the map of the ongoing projects and proposed projects for the inter-island bridges. The inter-island linkage mega bridge program will provide linkages among the various islands of the country through the construction of a series of short and long span bridges. The Build Better More infrastructure project in the Philippines includes a significant investment in road construction, with plans to build a total of 3,280 kilometers of new roads. It includes the Bayombong Solano Bypass Road in Nueva Vizcaya, the access road to Kigay Sandbar Beach Falls in Zamboanga, Sibugay, Cabanatohan Lemery Road, Lemery Iloilo, and a lot more. The Build Better More infrastructure project in the Philippines also includes the 323 bridges constructed, widened, upgraded, rehabilitated, and strengthened from July 2022 to March 2023. It includes Kamuning Flyover in Quezon City and San Francisco Bridge Widening in Tarlac. BBM Infrastructure Program incorporates a significant commitment to flood mitigation through 1,680 flood control projects located in Ilocos Sur, Negros Occidental, Sorsogon City, Nasugbu, Batangas, and Pampanga. Here are some of the BBM infrastructure projects. Cavite Laguna Expressway. It is a 45-kilometer expressway connecting Cavitex in Kawit Cavite and Eslex Mamplasan Interchange in Binyan, Laguna. Next is the Enlex Eslex Connector Road. It is a 7.7-kilometer elevated expressway from the end of Segment 10, in C3 Road, Caloocan City to PUP Santa Mesa, Manila and connecting to the Skyway Stage 3. 
Next is the Central Luzon Link Expressway Phase 1. It is a 30-kilometer expressway from Tarlac City, Cabanatuan City, Nueva Ecija. Next is the Flood Risk Management Project in Cagayan de Oro River. So its project cost is $12.5 billion and its target completion date is in December 2023. Next is the Samar Pacific Coastal Road that is 11.6 kilometers including three bridges. Next is improving growth corridors in Mindanao Road Sector Project. It is a 151.96 kilometers and it includes seven road sub-projects, Guicam Bridge and three Tawi-Tawi Bridges. Here is the continuation of the overview of BBM infrastructure projects. First is the Road Network Development Project in Conflict Affected Areas in Mindanao. It is a 175 kilometers access road. Next is the Laguna Lakeshore Road Network. It is 51 kilometers road network along Laguna Lakeshore. Next is the Bataan Cavite Interlink Bridge. It is a 32 kilometer bridge connecting Marivillas, Bataan, and Naik and Cavite. Next is the Pangil Bay Bridge. It is a 3.17 kilometer bridge connecting Tangub City in Misamis Occidental to Tubod Lanao del Norte. Next is in Samal Island Davao City Connector Bridge. It is a 3.98 kilometer cable stayed bridge. Next is the Davao City Bypass Construction Project. It is a 45-kilometer highway including a 2 to 2.3-kilometer mountain tunnels. So the Build Better More infrastructure project directly impacts the real estate industry because it increases the accessibility of many real estate developments outside of Metro Manila. It also improves demand and value for properties in the provinces. It also improves the livability of communities and provinces. And lastly, real estate developers and investors can cash in on new markets and trends. The Philippine Infrastructure Flagship Projects, or IFPS. The Philippines, known for its stunning natural beauty and resilient people, has embarked on an ambitious undertaking to modernize its infrastructure through the Philippine Infrastructure flagship projects. The extensive program launched under the Build Better More initiative aims to address long-standing challenges and propel the nation towards a more prosperous and inclusive future. The Metro Manila Subway, formerly known as the Mega Manila Subway MMS, is an under-construction, underground rapid transit line in Metro Manila. The 36-kilometer line which will run north to south between Valenzuela, Quezon City, Pasig, Taguig, Paranaque, and Pasay consists of 18 stations between the East Valenzuela and Bicutan stations. It will become the country's second direct airport rail link after the North-South Commuter Railway with a branch line to Ninoy Aquino International Airport. As the first subway system in the Philippines, the project represents a significant milestone in the country's infrastructure development. Once operational, it is expected to cater to the growing transportation needs of the capital region, connecting key areas and offering a reliable alternative to the existing modes of public transportation. Dubbed as the country's project of the century, the Metro Manila subway's groundbreaking occurred on February 27, 2019, and construction began the following December. Subsequently, suffering delays due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the line is scheduled to partially open in 2025 and projected to be fully operational by 2029. The project is expected to cost $355.6 billion, equivalent to $7.06 billion. Much of its cost is covered by a loan provided by the Japan International Cooperation Agency. The Metro Manila subway is integrated with the public transit system in Metro Manila. Passengers may take various forms of road-based public transport, such as buses and jeepneys, to and from a station to reach their intended destination. The line is designed to connect with other urban rail transit services in the region. Riders may transfer to LRT Line 1, MRT Line 3, and MRT Line 7 at the nearby North Triangle Common Station. 
which is also currently under construction. Other connections include the existing LRT Line 2 and PNR Metro Commuter Line, as well as the planned Makati Infracity Subway, the MRT Line 4 and MRT Line 8. The Metro Manila Subway is set to revolutionize transportation in the bustling metropolis, offering a swift and efficient way for commuters to navigate the urban sprawl. With, this, with plans for 18 stations spanning over 36 kilometers, this underground transport system promises to alleviate traffic congestion and provide a more sustainable mode of travel for millions of Filipinos. Today, we are delighted to present an overview of the ongoing and upcoming expressway and bridge projects in the Philippines under the Build Better More program initiated by the Department of Public Works and Highway or DPWH. This project aims to enhance transportation infrastructure, reduce travel time, and foster economic development across various regions of the country. North Luzon Expressway and Leg Segment 8.2 The North Luzon Expressway Segment 8.2 is an ongoing construction project. It involves the construction of an 8.3-kilometer four-lane expressway from Segment 8.1 at Mindanao Avenue, traversing westward to Republic Avenue and turning right to Luzon Avenue up to Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City. The project impact has significant reduction in travel time from Mindanao Avenue to Commonwealth Avenue. It will benefit approximately 45,000 motorists per day. NLEX SLEX Connector Road the NLEX SLEX Connector Road is another ongoing construction project. It comprises an 8-kilometer, all-elevated, four-lane tall expressway extending from NLEX southward to PUP Santa Mesa, Manila and connecting to Skyway Stage 3, mostly traversing along the PNR rail track. The project impact, it provides a seamless traffic flow, reducing travel time significantly that connects Naga City to the Now City in just 1 hour and 10 minutes. Southeast Metro Manila Expressway The Southeast Metro Manila Expressway is currently under construction. It involves the construction of a 32.7-kilometer combination of elevated and at grade expressway from Skyway or FTI Taguig City to Batasan Complex in Quezon City. The project impact, it offers an alternate route from Paranaque to Quezon City alleviating congestion on major arteries. It also facilitates easier travel through developing areas of Taguig, Taytay, Antipolo, and San Mateo. Cavite Laguna Expressway or CALAX The CALAX project is partially operational and still under construction. It aims to connect Cavitex in Cavite Cavite to SLEX Mamplasan Interchange in Binyan Laguna spanning 44.58 kilometers. The project impact reduces travel time from 1.5 hours to 45 minutes that connects rapidly growing provinces hosting major industrial projects and densely populated areas. South Luzon Expressway, SLEC Toll Road 4 SLEC Toll Road 4 is an ongoing construction project spanning 66.7 kilometers from Santo Tomas, Batangas to Tayabas, Lucena City, Quezon Province. The project impact enhances transport of goods and services between southern provinces and Manila, significantly shortens travel time and reduces traffic volume on the Pan-Philippine Highway. South Luzon Expressway SLEX Toll Road 5 Segment 1 SLEX Toll Road 5 Segment 1 is currently in the project preparation piece. It involves the construction of a 470-kilometer four-lane divided toll road connecting Lucena City, Quezon to Matnog, Sorsogon. The project impact provides better and safer access to tourism destinations and addresses traffic congestions in the Bicol region. C5 South Link Expressway Project The C5 South Link Expressway Project is currently under construction with partial operational status. It spans 7.7 kilometers from R1 Expressway to S Lake or CP Garcia Avenue or C5 Road. The project impact offers additional capacity to the road network in Metro Manila, provides seamless expressway travel from north to south and vice versa. Central Luzon Link Expressway CLLEX Pace 1 CLLEX Pace 1 completed already. 
comprises a 30.7 km Furlan Expressway. It serves as an important link in the high standard highway network within the 200 km radius from Metro Manila. The project impact provides fast, safe, and reliable transport in Region 3, decongesting traffic on the Pan Philippine Highway, supports socioeconomic development in Tarlac and Cabanatuan cities. Central Luzon Link Expressway CLLEX Phase 2 CLLEX Phase 2 is an ongoing construction project extending the expressway by 35.7 kilometers from Cabanatuan City to San Jose City. The project impact enhances transportation from Metro Manila to various destinations in Central Luzon, contributing to the congestion efforts. Metro Cebu Expressway the Metro Cebu Expressway project is currently under construction, aiming to build a 73.75 km expressway from Naga City to the Nao City. Project impact provides a seamless north south backbone highway, significantly reducing travel time between Naga City and the Nao City. Iloilo Kapisaklan Expressway or IKAX The Iloilo Kapisaklan Expressway or IKAX is in the project feasibility stage. It spans 210 kilometers, mainly elevated traversing three provinces in Panay. The project impact reduces travel time between Iloilo, Capiz, and Aklan provinces, enhancing logistics and tourism development. Now, let's shift our focus to some significant bridge projects where DPWH oversees included in the Build Better More. The projects are scattered across the country, but most of the big ticket ones are in Luzon. Let's start with the Binondo Intramuros Bridge, a recently completed project. The cost of the project reached 3.39 billion pesos. The iconic bridge spans 680 meters over the Pasig River, connecting Solana Street and Riverside Drive in Intramuros to Rentas. Street Plaza, Del Conde Street, and Well de la Industria in Binondo. It provides four lanes for motorists, facilitating smoother traffic flow. Similar to the Estrella Pantaleon Bridge, which will I discuss later, it's funded by the Chinese government. The bridge served as a vital link between two historic districts and was open to the public on April 5, 2022. Next, let's discuss the Estrella Pantaleon Beach, also known as the Rockwell Beach. The project status is completed. It was inaugurated last July 2021. The cost of the project reached to 1.4 billion pesos. This four-lane 500-meter bridge connects the cities of Makati and Mandaluyong, serving approximately 50,000 motorists daily. The project, funded by the Chinese government, significantly improves connectivity between the two bustling cities. It plays a vital role in easing traffic congestion and enhancing transportation efficiency in Metro Manila. Now, let's move on to the ongoing construction project, the Pangil Bay Bridge. The project status is ongoing construction, the completion date preferably this March 2024. The cost of the project reached $7.37 billion. This ambitious project aims to construct a 3.17-kilometer bridge spanning Pangil Bay connecting Tanglob City in Misamis Occidental to Tobod in Anao del Norte. Once completed, the bridge will significantly reduce travel time, allowing motorists to traverse the bay in just 7 minutes. It provides a faster and more efficient alternative to the current travel methods, which involve lengthy ferry rides or land travel around the bay. In conclusion, these expressway and bridge projects signify the government commitment to enhancing transportation infrastructure, reducing travel time, and promoting economic development across various regions of the Philippines. We look forward to the completion of these projects and the positive impact they will have on the country's connectivity and growth. Thank you for your attention. Next would be the airport projects. In line with the previous administration's ambitious Build, Build, Build program, 28 airport projects for construction, rehabilitation, and upgrade are listed in the Department of Transportation's priority agenda. Both international and domestic airport projects have already been finished. 
15 regional airport projects were on track for expansion and upgrade under the new administration, according to the Department of Transportation. Some are ongoing and some are undergoing project preparation. All the airport projects are under the Department of Transportation except for the Clark International Airport, which was supervised by the Basis Conversion and Development Authority. First is the Clark International Airport New Terminal. Clark International Airport is located inside Clark Freeport Zone in Pampanga and serves as the main gateway to the northern and central Luzon regions. It is accessible via the Subic Clark Tarlac Expressway or the SETEX, which connects the north via Tarlac Pangasinan La Union Expressway or the TPLEX, and Metro Manila and the southern Luzon region via North Luzon Expressway or the NLEX. The 12.5 billion Clark International Airport opened the gates of its new passenger terminal building on May 2 after all departing and arriving flights were transferred to the modern state-of-the-art facility envisioned to be Asia's next premier gateway. The new passenger terminal building of Clark International Airport, which started operations in May 2022, is a four-level building with a total area of 110,000 square meters and can accommodate 8 million passengers annually, providing Filipinos with a transport facility that will help decongest the Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Metro Manila. The new building houses both domestic and international terminals of Clark. Next is the Lingayen Airport Improvement. Lingayen Airport is the airport serving the general area of Lingayen, the capital of the province of Pangasinan. It is one of the two airports in the province, the other being Rosales Airport. It is classified as a community airport by the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. For this 37.8 million project, the focus of the improvement is the asphalt overlay on the airstrip track. The government vowed to invest further in enhancements of facilities to allow the aviation hub to support commercial operations. The plan is to extend the runway from 90 meters to 1.3 kilometers and the width from 30 meters to 40 meters. The project was completed in 2020. Next is Lawag International Airport Improvement. It is the only airport in Ilocos Norte and is the northernmost international airport in the Philippines by geographic location. Following the completion of the airport's powerhouse is the expansion and improvement of the passenger terminal building, expansion of apron, and rehabilitation of its runway, which is under the national government's infrastructure development program. Seven years ago, the Lawag Airport could only accommodate a combined number of 140 international and domestic passengers. But through the joint initiatives and development projects pursued by the Department of Transportation and the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, the Lawag Airport can now serve 200 international passengers and 240 domestic passengers. The 128 million airport improvement helped enhance Ilocos region's connectivity and mobility as it further boosted the province's economic growth, tourism, and socio-economic opportunities. The construction of the administration building started on December 10, 2019 and was completed on December 23, 2020. Next is Vigan Airport Improvement. It is also known as Mindoro Airport, serving the general area of Vigan, the capital of the province of Ilocosur. The airport is the only one located in Ilocosur at Barangay Mindoro and not on the island of Mindoro. It is classified as a community airport by the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. Previously, the airport was considered by the city government as a sleeping asset since no revenue was generated from its operations. Plans were made by the city to expand and modernize the airport, in part to lighten the burden of traveling to Vigan from Manila and other cities and towns by bus, as well as to develop the city's burgeoning tourism industry. On May 25, 2022, the Department of Transportation and the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines inaugurated the completed 79.56 million Vigan Airport Development Project. Part of the renovations and improvements done on the airport was the expansion and rehabilitation of its passenger terminal building, the arrival and pre-departure areas, the construction of the airport's administrative building, a powerhouse and the provision of runway features, provision of water supply storage and parking area which manages the airport. The vegan airport can now accommodate 150 passengers, more than thrice its previous capacity of only 40 passengers. Next is the Tugagaraw Airport Improvement. In 2015, the Department of Transportation launched the expansion and modernization program of the Tagaygaraw Airport. This 56 million Tagaygaraw Airport development project consists of 10.67 million for taxiway and runway widening and another 45.99 million for the terminal upgrades. The newly renovated and expanded passenger terminal building at Tagaygaraw Airport was inaugurated on March 14, 2018. 
This airport serves the city of Tagaygarao, the capital of the province of Cagayan at the northern tip of Luzon, the country's largest and most populous island. Tagaygarao Airport, which is located along the Pan-Philippine Highway, also known as the Maharlika Highway, has been classified as a major commercial domestic airport by the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines. The enlargement of that terminal at Tugaygaro Airport was part of a series of upgrades and improvements to help accommodate significantly more aircraft and passengers at the airport. Next is Sangli Point Airport or the Cavite Airport. Sangli Point Airport is an airport at Sangli Point, Cavite City and is currently used for domestic flights. It saw upgrades at the time of the Duterte administration. Improvements were made in the runway and a new terminal building which can serve 160 passengers was constructed. The improved airport Phase 1 started in 2018 and was completed in October 2019. This 515 million project was inaugurated in February 2020. The airport is set to be developed into an international airport. Its proximity to the National Capital Region area will make it a new international gateway to Manila. This will be the third international airport that serves Manila alongside Naiya in Manila and the under construction New Manila Airport in Bulacan. As demand for air travel is expected to increase in the next 30 to 40 years, the province of Cavite has been pushing for the development of the Sangli Point International Airport project as an alternative to the overcrowded Naiya in Pasay City. Next is the New Manila International Airport. The New Manila International Airport project is a game changer for the Philippines, a world-class airport that will be developed in phases with an initial capacity of 35 million passengers annually and a target of 100 million passengers per year once fully completed. Construction on the new airport commenced in 2019 and is expected to be completed in 2027. The New Manila International Airport is being developed in the Bulacan province. Also known as Bulacan International Airport, the project will meet the Philippines' current and future demand for air transport services and help in the country's post-pandemic economic recovery. The government of the Philippines will fully own the new airport, which is being developed with an estimated investment of $735 billion. As the single largest investment in the country to date, it represents a long-term solution to air traffic congestion in the country's capital, which has long hindered economic growth and compounded many transportation-related problems. It will provide safe, convenient, reliable, and efficient air transport services in response to the Philippines' urgent need for a new international gateway with sufficient capacity to serve present and future demand. It is positioned to serve Metro Manila as well as its neighboring regions of Central Luzon and the Calabarzon region in Southern Luzon. Next is New Bukidnon Airport. Located in Barangay Maraymaray in Don Carlos Town in the southern part of the province, the airport is one of the flagship projects of the national government in northern Mindanao. The Bukidnon Airport Development Project has a budget of $1.8 billion and is expected to be fully operational by the second quarter of 2026. Concreting of the airport apron and taxiway are so far the latest developments in the construction of the Bukidnon Airport. However, Vertical works of the passenger terminal building are yet to be initiated. This airport will serve the province and neighboring regions, boosting the economic and trade growth of north-central Mindanao. Next is the General Santos International Airport Improvement. The upgraded General Santos Airport can now accommodate up to 2 million passengers annually from the previous ceiling of 800,000. The improvements completed at the airport include the 434.29 million rehabilitation and expansion of a passenger terminal building, the 107.22 million procurement and installation of navigational aids, and the 23.43 million construction of a CAAP administration building with a total project cost of 564 million. The airport serves the provinces of South Cotabato, Cotabato, Sultan Kudarat, Sarangani, and the city of General Santos. Next is the Lagindingan Airport Expansion Project. The Department of Transportation, Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, and the local government of Misamis Oriental broke ground on the 12.75 billion passenger terminal building expansion project on February 4, 2024. Work on the expansion will start this year. With the completion of the innovative expansion project, Lagindingan Airport Passenger Terminal Building will increase capacity by 72% to 860 from 500 passengers, addressing congestion at the second busiest airport in Mindanao. Lagindingan Airport serves the cities of Cagayan de Oro, Iligan, and Marawi, as well as the provinces of Misamis Oriental, 
Bukidnon, and Lanao del Norte. Next is the Zamboanga Airport Improvement. The Department of Transportation and the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines inaugurated in September 2021 the first phase of the 74.6 million Zamboanga International Airport Development Project. Under the project, the airport's passenger terminal building was expanded, allowing it to handle 50% more passengers, 750 from the previous 500. The passenger terminal building's floor area was also expanded with the addition of 691.2 square meters for a total area of 3,456 square meters. In addition, a Malasakit Hall and a Gender and Development Multipurpose Hall were constructed. Next is the Kalbayog Airport New Terminal. The completion of the new airport terminal and runway extension project was delayed in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The 627 million new airport terminal, including the newly extended runway, was finally inaugurated on May 5, 2021, after almost four years of construction. The development of the project included comprehensive landside and airside facilities such as the new passenger terminal building, the airport which can now accommodate jet aircraft operations, an increased terminal capacity of 450 passengers from the previous 76 passenger capacity will now be able to provide convenient and accessible air travel to the people of Eastern Visayas. The recent improvements made to Kalbayog Airport in Samar are seen to contribute to the development and economic revitalization of Eastern Visayas through its role of offloading air traffic from neighboring Tacloban Airport. Next is the Tacloban Airport New Terminal. Named after Daniel Z. Romualdez, a former Speaker of the House of Representatives, the airport serves as the main gateway from Manila and Cebu to Eastern Visayas. It is located in the city of San Jose. DZR Airport will elevate its status from a major domestic airport to an international airport by 2025 with ongoing and future projects lined up to improve the facility of Phase 1 and Phase 2. The building design is inspired by San Juanico Bridge and the city's coastal mountain landscape merged with Taklob Fish Cage. The 1.96 billion terminal project with a capacity of 1,670 passengers, which began on December 5, 2020, was supposed to be completed on May 29, 2022. Tacloban Airport is expected to be completed this year after some construction delays. In 2022, the airport served 1.48 million inbound and outbound passengers, making it the seventh busiest in the country. Next is the Sigihor Airport Improvement. The newly upgraded Airport of Sikihor helped boost employment, economic growth, and trade in the central Visayas. The 34.79 million construction project was finished on July 30, 2021 and was later inaugurated on August 26. The airport upgrade project covered the construction of a new passenger terminal building, a powerhouse, and a vehicle parking area. It expanded the capacity of the old airport to 50 from 10. Other upgrade works in the airport, including the runway extension and asphalt overlay, was completed in June 2022. Next is Mactan Cebu International Airport New Terminal. The Mactan Cebu International Airport is the gateway to Central Visayas and parts of Negros Oriental. It is located in Lapu-Lapu City on Mactan Island in the island province of Cebu. It is the perfect jump-off point if you plan to visit the provinces of Cebu, Bohol, Siquijor, and the Maguete City in Negros Oriental that are known for their beaches and islands, diving spots, and nature attractions. The 17.52 billion new terminal building development was inaugurated in June 2018. Terminal 2 is the newest airport terminal and has an annual capacity of 8 million passengers, increasing the airport's capacity to 12.5 million passengers per year. This new terminal building is helping the city of Cebu position itself as a domestic and international tourism hub. Next is the Dumaguete Cebulan Airport Improvement. The 252 million newly rehabilitated airport was completed in 2021. Major upgrades and renovations at the airport helped boost trade and tourism in the province of Negros Oriental and paved the way for a faster economic recovery in the region. Improvements at the airport include the expansion of existing passenger terminal and construction of two taxiways, as well as reblocking of apron, overlaying of asphalt on the runway, and shoulder grade correction. The improvements upgraded the airport's capability to accommodate heavier aircraft and increased the terminal's passenger capacity from 330 to 450. Next is the Bohol Panglao International Airport Development. 
Bohol Panglao International Airport is the first eco-friendly airport constructed on Panglao Island, Bohol Province. The 8.9 billion facility replaced existing Tagbilaran Airport, the country's 11th busiest airport. Construction was completed in November 2018 and the Bohol Airport began operations in the same month. The Panglao Airport is a greenfield construction and is 10 times bigger than the Tagbilaran Airport. Tagbilaran Airport was built on an area of 850 square meters and handles approximately 800,000 passengers a year, whereas the new Panglao International Airport can manage 2 million passengers a year. As a eco airport, the facility is designed with environmentally friendly elements and green technology in mind and it meets the highest international standards. Next is the Antique Airport Improvement. The newly improved Antique Airport started its operations in December 2018. The airport stopped commercial operations for several years and was used only by private planes until the government decided to reopen it in December. Prior to reopening, many Antiqueños had to fly in and out via the airports of neighboring Aklan or Iloilo. The airport has been improved at a budget of $40 million. Part of enhancing the capabilities of Antique Airport is the improvement on the runway and terminal facilities. The runway was extended to 1.4 kilometers to serve commercial aircraft operations. The airport upgrade aims to deliver to the people of Antique the service and facility that they have long been yearning for. Next is the Calibo Airport Improvement. The newly restored Calibo International Airport in Calibo Aklan is expected to greet millions of passengers and tourists following the completion of the Gateway's 48.4 million development project in 2021. The development project covered the 19.5 million improvement of the International Passenger Terminal that was completed in September 2020, the 9.9 .9 million reblocking of the apron pavement finished in August in the same year, and the 18.9 million overall repair and restoration of the passenger terminal building, aircraft rescue and firefighting, shed and administration building completed in 2021. The International Passenger Terminal Building was expanded from its previous area of 1,584 square meters to 2,633 square meters, increasing the building capacity from 344 to 406 passengers. The overall repair and restoration of the Kalibu International Airport has improved and restored the airport's look as a whole. Next is the San Vicente Airport. The new 62.7 million regional airport in the rising tourism hub of San Vicente Town was inaugurated in 2018 and helped boost development not only in the area but also other parts of northern Palawan. Located west of the former Inundeng Airstrip, the San Vicente Airport serves the country's first flagship tourism enterprise zone along a 14-kilometer long beach facing the Imuruan Bay of the South China Sea. It's designed to promote and support the vibrant tourism scene in town. The airport features a passenger terminal that can accommodate 100 passengers, a fire station building, and an elevated 2,500 U.S. gallon water tank facility. Its concrete runway measures 1,612 meters or 5,288 feet long and 45 meters or 148 feet wide. Next is the Bicol International Airport. Bicol International Airport in the Raga Town, Albay Province is the first international airport south of Metro Manila was inaugurated in 2021. Dubbed as the most scenic gateway in the Philippines, Bicol International Airport has the backdrop of the beautiful Mayon Volcano. The aviation hub in the Raga Albay is designed to serve 2 million passengers a year. The 5 billion project involved the construction of runway extension, passenger terminal building, and landside facilities. Next is the Puerto Princesa International Airport New Terminal. Operations at the new terminal of the Puerto Princesa International Airport began following the inauguration of the 4.5 billion facility in 2017. Part of the improvements in the Palawan Airport is the new terminal, which is a floor area of 13,000 square meters and a seating capacity of 1,500. Meanwhile, the improved parking space has slots for over 200 cars. To accommodate bigger and more aircraft, the government built a 2,600-meter runway and six parking bays. The new terminal replaced the 3,000-square-meter or 32,000-square-feet old passenger terminal with an annual capacity of 350,000 passengers and an apron with four parking bays. In 2019, the terminal was equipped with free Wi-Fi for all travelers. 
Next is the Shorigao Airport Rehabilitation. The Shorigao Airport Development Project broke ground in 2022, the same day that the rehabilitated sections of the airport were inaugurated. The airport was severely damaged at the height of Typhoon Odette, the strongest typhoon to hit the country in 2021. The development project includes improvement of the passenger terminal building, powerhouse, perimeter fence, vehicle parking area, administration building, two-bay fire station building, and expansion of apron. Upon completion, the gateway to the surfing capital was able to accommodate more passengers, provide wider connectivity and mobility, and help propel progress in the economy, tourism, and commerce, which benefit the people of Surigao del Norte. Next is the Surigao Airport Improvement. The rehabilitated Surigao Airport was inaugurated in June 2022 with a total project cost of 80.8 .8 million. The airport suffered major damages when a magnitude 6.7 earthquake hit Surigao City in February 2017 and during the onslaught of Typhoon Odette in December 2021. The improvements include an expanded runway, renovated passenger terminal building, and the establishment of the airport's aerodrome rescue and firefighting building. A total of 60.8 million budget was incurred for the expansion and repair of the runway. The rehabilitation of the passenger terminal and the establishment of the rescue and firefighting building have a total cost of 20 million. The airport's expanded runway now has a total length of 1,400 meters, while improvements at the passenger terminal include the provision of additional restrooms, installation of toilet fixtures, and the installation of nine air conditioning units. After the two major calamities that heavily damaged the airport, it is now ready to serve the people of Surigao. Next is the Davao International Airport Improvement. The terminal building of the airport, also known as the Francisco Bangoy International Airport, has been undergoing improvements, particularly in the passenger terminal building, since March 2022 with a budget of 46.98 million. It is expected to be completed by June 2023. Davao International Airport's terminal building will be expanded at a cost of 700 million with construction work targeted to start last year. The proposed expansion is expected to be completed in 2025. The Department of Transportation implemented the renovation project earlier but it is not clear as to when it will be completed. The Davao International Airport is one of the country's busiest, catering to 251 domestic and 11 international flights weekly. It is the busiest gateway in Mindanao. With the influx of travelers transiting in the airport, the completion of these development projects are expected to allow the airport to serve and accommodate more passengers. And lastly, the Naia Rehabilitation. Given that it's the main gateway to Metro Manila, the 170.6 billion Ninoy Aquino International Airport Rehabilitation Project is among the priority projects in the BBB or BBM program. On February 16, 2024, the MIAA Board awarded the contract for the project to the SMC SAC Consortium, which submitted the highest bid amount and is sharing 82.16% of future gross revenues with the government, passenger service charges not included. The 15-year contract involves the rehabilitation, expansion, and operation of NAIA to address long-standing capacity issues. The project aims to increase NAIA's annual capacity to at least 62 million passengers from 35 million and enhance air traffic movement from 40 to 48 per hour. Once the concessionaire has taken over operations, the public should expect improve improvements by 2025. Key performance indicators include shorter and more predictable waiting time at the check-in and immigration counters, availability in parking, improved security checks, availability of seats, time it takes for the baggage to be transferred from the aircraft belly to the conveyor belts, reliable operating escalators, and passenger boarding bridges, among others. The project is ex expected to generate around 900 billion or 36 billion per year of revenue for the national government in the course of the full 25 years of the concession. This is inclusive of the concessionaire's 30% billion upfront payment, fixed annuity payment of 2 billion annually, and 82.16% government share. The development of these airport projects can have significant impacts on the real estate industry and the economy. One is increased demand for commercial and residential properties. Next is rise in property values. 
expansion of infrastructure and transportation networks, stimulus for tourism and hospitality sectors, creation of employment opportunities, facilitation of trade and investment, and infrastructure-led development. Overall, the development of these airport projects can have far-reaching positive impacts on the real estate industry and economy, driving growth, investment, and prosperity in the regions they serve. The Philippines is undergoing a transformative phase in its infrastructure development, with a focus on enhancing connectivity and promoting sustainable economic growth. Among the key components of this ambitious agenda are the infrastructure flagship project, with a significant emphasis on railways. This project aims to modernize and expand the country's railway network addressing issues such as traffic congestion, promoting efficient transportation, and fostering economic development. Here are some of the most notable upcoming railway projects in our country. The MRT-7 project is a 14-station railway project that runs in a northeast-southwest direction, beginning at San Jose del Monte up to the North Triangle Common Station in North Avenue, Quezon City. The project will cost an estimate of 62.7 billion with additional plans are laid for capacity expansion in order to accommodate the possible increase in passenger ridership in the future. The ongoing 22.8 kilometer railway project will have 14 stations. Starting at the northeast, the stations are the following. San, Hol San Jose del Monte Station, Stala, Sacred Heart, Quirino, Mindanao Avenue, Regalado, Doña Carmen, Mangahan, Batasan, Don Antonio, Tandang Sora, University Avenue, Quezon Memorial Circle, and ends at the North Edsa Station in the Southwest. As of January 31, 2023, the project is 66.7% complete. The line was planned to undergo demonstration runs by 2023 and full operations by 2024 to 2025, but was later deemed no longer feasible, targeting full operation by the second quarter of 2025 instead. This project will cut travel time from North Avenue, Quezon City, to San Jose del Monte, Bulacan, to an estimated 35 minutes from the current 2 to 3 hours. Next is the MRT-4 project. It is a 10-station elevated railway that will connect Ortigas Center in Metro Manila with the suburban municipality of Taytay Rizal. On October 12, 2022, the Department of Transportation confirmed that the Asian Development Bank will extend a loan of $1 billion US dollars for the project. The loan agreement is expected to be signed in this year, 2024. The project will start the intersection of EDSA and Ortigas Avenue and it will traverse the Ortigas Corridor until Tikling area in Taytay Rizal. And it will then follow the Taytay Diversion Road alignment until the line ends at the Manila East Road in Taytay. Its depot will be at the site of the cancelled Excel Shore Villas development beside Club Manila East and Taytay Municipal Hall. The approved 12.7 km railway project will have 10 stations. Starting at the west, the stations are the following. Edsa Station, Meralco, Tendesitas, Rosario, St. Joseph, Cainta Junction, San Juan, Tikling Junction, Manila East Road, and ends at the Taytay Station in the east. As of 2021, Ortigas Avenue has an annual average daily traffic of 186,000 vehicles. However, only 9.7% of daily traffic comes from public utility vehicles including taxis. An average commute from Tikling Rizal to Ortega Center in Pasig City can take up to 3 hours during rush hour. This is the primary motivation to build a rail line in the vicinity to improve journey times between the two areas. The Subic Clark Railway is a four segment railway project connecting Subic Bay Freeport and Clark Freeport, providing a railway link between the Port of Subic and the Clark International Airport. In due course, the railway will be extended to New Clark City. The project will cost an estimated of 50 billion pesos financed through ODA and PPP, with a government shelling out for right-of-way acquisition. The project will traverse eight municipalities and cities, Angeles City, Mabalacat City, Porac, and Florida Blanca in Pampanga, 
the municipalities of Dinalupihan and Hermosa in Bataan and Olongapu City and Municipality of Subic in Zambales. As of November 23, 2023, the project awaits NEDA's budget approval due to the expected upward adjustment in their costs because of the delays. The project is projected to deliver high economic returns, decongest Metro Manila, and to support current industrial activities and the potential demand for freight services along the Subic Clark Corridor. The Mindanao Railway Network will be constructed as a totaling network of 2,278 kilometers of tracks, with the center piece being a circumferential main line that connects some of the major cities of the island. The Mindanao Railway will be constructed in phases, covering seg segments of various lengths. The first phase, also known as the Tagum Davao Digo segment of the circumferential main line, will be the first section to be constructed. This phase 1 involves the construction of the a 102 km segment between the cities of Tagum and Digos. This phase involves the construction of 102 km segments between the cities of Tagum and Digos, passing through Davao City. The project, with a total project cost of 81.67 billion, is currently in the process of design finalization and the right-of-way acquisition. The railway project will have two depots and eight stations, namely the Tagum City Station, Carmen, Panabo, Mujang, Davao Terminal, Turil, Santa Cruz, and ends at the Digo City Station. Furthermore, a 10-hectare depot will be built in the Tagum City and another in Davao City. As of November 2023, the project awaits NEDA's budget approval due to the expected upward adjustment in their costs because of the delays upon the project completion. As of November 23, 2023, the project awaits NEDA's budget approval due to the expected upward adjustment in their cost because of the delays. Upon project completion, the railway project is expected to reduce travel time from Tagum City, Davao del Norte to Digo City, Davao del Sur from 3.5 hours to 1.5 hours. The other one is the Mindanao Railway Project Phase 3, also known as the Northern Mindanao Segment. This phase involves the construction of the 54.8 km long and connect the metropolitan area of Cagayan de Oro from Lagindingan to Villanueva. Furthermore, the railway project is in its ongoing feasibility study and project preparation. The proposed railway project is projected to have seven stations, namely Lagindingan Station, Alubihib, El Salvador, Opol, Cagayan de Oro, Tagolongan, and ends at the Villanueva Station. As of November 24, 2023, a $100 million fund for the feasibility study was approved for Min Northern Mindanao Railway Project. Upon completion of the project, the railway aims to connect the highly urbanized area of Cagayan de Oro to Lagindingan Airport. Next is the PNR North Long Haul Railway Project. The PNR North Main Line, simply known as PNR North or North Rail, is one of the two trunk lines of the Philippine National Railways in the island of Luzon. The other being the PNR South Main Line, the line during its maximum extent led to various city and municipalities in Central Luzon and the Ilocos region. The North Long Haul Project shall revive the intercity section of the North Main Line north of New Clark City Station in Capas. It shall also expand into regions that were not served by the railways. The line is set to be connected to the South Main Line through the NSC R and the SCRP and the North Drive Ports Project. The system consists of two lines. The North Long Hall in the West is the reconstruction of the old North Main Line between New Clark City and La Union. The line is expected to be around 159. The line is expected to be around 159 km long. The North Long Haul East aims to revive the failed Cagayan Valley extension project that was cancelled in the late 1960s. Branching off the old main line at the Tarlac City, the line will continue towards the direction of San Jose, Nueva Ecija, from which the 10km Caraballo Tunnel will be built. After the tunnel, the line continues towards to Isabela and Cagayan until it terminates at Tugigoro. The line is expected to be around 308 km long. As of March 31, 2023, 
The project is in going preparation for financing, design, construction, operation, and maintenance of the 800-kilometer interregional railway system in the northern Luzon, connecting the National Capital Region, Region 1, Region 2, and Region 3. The PNR North Long Haul Project is envisioned to link the strategic infrastructure such as the Clark Freeport Zone, Poro Point, Lawag International Airport, Port Irene, and Lalo Airport. Its counterpart is the PNR South Long Haul Project, also known as the PNR Bicol, is a proposed 639-kilometer long haul intercity rail line in southern Luzon, Philippines. It is one of the two lines that will reconstruct the historic PNR South Main Line, along with the electrified North-South Commuter Railway South Section to Calamba, Laguna. The line will initially begin at Banlik Station in Calamba, Laguna, and terminate at Daraga Albay. There will be additional extensions. There will be additional extensions, infill stations, and branch lines. The master plan line shall connect passengers from Sugat Station in Muntinlupa to either the Batangas Port, the Gaspi Albay, or Matnog Sorsogon. Freight trains will also serve the line and there will be an eventual extension of the line to the Port of Manila. The proposed 639km railway project will have two routes. The main line, which is the Sugat to Matnog, and the branch route, which is the San Antonio to Batangas. The main line will comprise of 29 stations, starting from Sugat Station in Metro Manila, passing through the provinces of Laguna, Quezon, Camarines Sur, and Albay, leading up to the Matnog Station in Sorsogon. Future development will lead to a branch route with five stations. The San Antonio Station in Quezon will branch off going to Batangas Port Station. The project is estimated to cost 175 billion pesos and financing for the line was originally supposed to be supported by the Chinese Official Development Assistance, which was later on withdrawn in 2023. However, the line will be partially operational between San Pablo and Lucena by 2025. The first phase between Banlik and Daraga will be fully opened by 2027. Upon completion of the project, PNR South Long Haul Railway aims to achieve less than 5-hour travel time from Metro Manila to Legazpi Albay. Lastly, the North-South Commuter Railway, also known as the clark Calamba Railway, is a 147-kilometer urban rail transit system running from the new Clark City in Capas to Calamba, Laguna. With 36 stations and 4 services, the railway was designed to improve connectivity within the Greater Manila area and will be integrated with the railway network in the region. The North-South Commuter Railway is being built in three phases and divided into two primary sections. PNR Clark, the construction was divided into two phases. PNR Clark 1 involves the 38-kilometer to Tuban Malolos Railway composed of 15 stations, while PNR Clark 2 involves the 53 km Malolos Clark Railway consisting of 7 stations. PNR Calamba, the 56 km railway, will run from Solis Station in Metro Manila to Calamba Station in Laguna, which is composed of 19 stations. The project is expected to cost 873.62 billion, making the line the most expensive railway transportation project in the country. The entire system is expected to be completed by 2029. Upon its completion, commuters from Tutuban will reach Malolos in a approximately 35 minutes and are projected to serve more than 300,000 people daily during its opening year. This will greatly reduce traffic congestion and promote sustainable economic growth. These infrastructure flagship projects represent a concerted effort by the government to transform the country's railway infrastructure, addressing current challenges and positioning the nation for sustained economic growth. As this project progress, they are expected to significantly impact transportation efficiency, stimulate economic activities, and improve the overall quality of life for the Filipinos. To further understand and appreciate the infrastructure flagship project, the government's Build Better More program, we prepared a short video presentation acquired from research person closely connected with some of these projects. Enjoy! Can you provide an overview of SMC Infrastructure's current portfolio of projects? Currently, the, the San Miguel Corporation's um, portfolio of projects 
uh, it has 13 uh, starting from the tiplex in this in the north uh, the skyway system the southern tagalog arterial road the slex uh, the naia x the parex or the pasig river expressway mrt7 bulacan bulk water manila north harbor port boracay airport and the new manila international airport what are the key features and benefits of the tarlac pangasinan la union expressway the tiplex its key benefits is to shorten travel time especially tourists from baguio and la union uh, the other benefits include um uh shorten delivery time of uh, goods from baguio city could you discuss the significance of the skyway system to the transportation infrastructure of Metro Manila? Skyway system, uh, currently it has four stages. The Skyway Stage 1, which consists a 9.3 kilometer elevated road that runs from Bikutan to Makati Central Business District. The Stage 2, it's a 6.86 kilometer elevated expressway that consists six lanes in the Bikutan to Sukat section and four lanes in the Sukat to Alabang section with ramps leading to the Eslex. Uh, one of the major infrastructure initiatives is the Skyway Stage 3. It is 17.93 km, six-lane elevated highway that extends the existing elevated skyway from Buendia, Makati to Balintawa, Quezon City and will link the South Luzon Expressway to Enlex. This project aims to decongest the major thoroughfares, especially EDSA, while creating new transport routes. Uh, there is another plan of expansion, the Skyway Stage 4. It is an 80-kilometer mixed elevated and at grid toll road that will connect the existing Skyway system from the FTI all the way to Bulacan. Can you elaborate on the expansion plans for the South Luzon Expressway or SLEX and its implication for regional development? SLEX has uh, two upcoming ex expansions or extensions. First is the Toll Road 4 or the Tier 4, and the second one is the Toll Road 5 or the Tier 5. Uh, the Tier 4, uh, it will extend the SLEX from Santo Tomas Batangas all the way to, Luz to Lucena, Quezon. Its key benefits is to uh, decongest traffic provinces, especially the San Pablo City, as well as to shorten travel time. Our motorists uh, who would want to visit the Quezon provinces, it will also um, benefit our uh, our vendors who will transport their goods from uh, Quezon to Manila and vice versa. Uh, next is the TR5. It is a 420 kilometer, 420 kilometer toll road expansion that will extend equal opportunities of economic growth to the region of Bicol. Can you outline the vision and significance of the new Manila International Airport or NMIA project for the Philippines aviation industry and economic competitiveness? The NMIA or the New Manila International Airport project is a game changer for the Philippines. It is a world-class airport that will develop uh, in phases with an initial capacity of 35 million passengers annually in the target of 100 million passengers per year once fully complete. Uh, the project will rise on an over 2,500 hectare property in Bulacan, Bulacan and will include various components such as airfield facilities, terminal building, airport and airline support facilities, access roads, parking facilities, uh, airport city, and other ancillary facilities. It will easily be accessible from Metro Manila and Luzon provinces via a master plan infrastructure network. Could you provide an update on the progress of the MRT-7 project and its expected impact on urban mobility in Metro Manila? The MRT-7, it is a 22-kilometer planned rail and road project starting in North Avenue, Quezon City. Uh, this will connect to the current MRT-3 and it will end in San Jose del Monte, Bulacan. It will also connect to the uh, to the new Manila International Airport. Uh, currently, it has 14 stations which can accommodate up to 650,000 pass 650, passengers daily. Uh, currently, they are constructing the major stations 
uh, and finishing other improvements, especially uh, the procurement of the train or the bagon that will be used. What is the current status of the North-South Commuter Railway Project in the Philippines? So, the current status of the North-South Commuter Railway, uh, commonly known as NSCR, the, the project currently is at 67.72%. Uh, we are currently at month 51. So the target as per the key date of the NSCRs is supposed to be uh, month 42 since uh, the project started 2019 of December. Factors that have made this project delayed for some time now is due to the fact that there were unavoidable delay caused by example the pandemic we have also the right of way issues uh, which is predominantly um, affecting the current progress especially in the areas of uh, Valenzuela going to Caloocan. Are there any challenges or obstacle phase during the planning and execution pieces of the project? Well, definitely there were challenges faced by the contractor in particular since I am part of the construction group to build the stations and depot from West Valenzuela going to Bukawe. So during the planning stage, um, we foresee that the right of way will be part of the challenge. Uh, number two, the obstructions also plays an important role in the program schedule of the project. And number three is the unforeseen delay brought about by design changes, which can only be seen during the inception of the project and also during the modeling or combining of all the trades, most especially the interfacing with the other contractor. During this execution, uh, the same problem has affected the progress of the project. So right now, since the Taisei DMCI joint venture, which handles the construction of all the stations and depot, are already in its month 51, which is supposed to finish month 42 or May of 2023. Um, the revolving fund, of course, has affected our progress as well as the um, manpower since the construction group needs to allocate in a strategic point all allocation across the project. How does the North-South Commuter Railway Project align with the broader infrastructure development goals of the Philippines? Well, in my opinion, since the project uh, spans from north to south, meaning north, um, Clark City, going to south, uh, Calamba Laguna, it spans a total of uh, about 110 kilometers and it um, traverses the Metro Manila um, area. So it interconnects the two um, ends of the PNR and is projected to have a speed travel time of around 120 kilometers per hour it will definitely narrow the gap between the north and south part of the two areas. It will promote a more, um, a more economic stability on those areas. Um, trade will be faster. Exchanges of goods are expected to be logistically um, uh, I can say efficiently and then the state of development 
as far as uh, commercial, industrial, and residential is concerned will improve. Since this infrastructure project um, will help in developing the country's economy. What is the allocated budget for the North-South Commuter Railway Project and how is it being funded? Okay, for the overall um, um, budget, meaning um, from North to South, it was estimated to be at 870 billion. However, for phase one, which is from uh, Tutuban to Malolos, it is estimated to have a worth of 897 uh, billion pesos. And it was funded by JICA, uh, Japan International Cooperation Agency. Could you elaborate on the expected length of the North-South Commuter Railway and how it compares to existing transportation infrastructure in the Philippines? To provide a uh, better understanding of how long the project stretches, so it is a 147-kilometer uh, urban rail transit development, uh, which runs from between uh, New Clark City in Capas to Calamba, Laguna. It will contain uh, 36 uh, stations, uh, including two depots. So there will be a depot in um, Valenzuela and then a uh, main depot in Clark. Currently, the NSER is the largest uh, railway project of the Philippines so far. And yeah, it is expected to provide uh, transportation to millions of uh, Filipinos. How is the timeline for the North-South Commuter Railway project structured and are there any potential delays or acceleration plans? Um, supposedly, um, the, the duration of the project for phase one, which is from uh, Tutuban to uh, Malolos, is supposed to be 42 months starting from the commencement date, which started December of uh, 2019. Um, now, due to uh, unforeseen delays, it is a mix of contractors delay, unavoidable delay, excusable delay. It is projected to extend. So the duration, yeah, in my opinion, how I see the project, it would extend up to double of the 42 month projected completion. The potential delay have brought about many challenges. So there are a lot of acceleration plans, of course. One of those is the augmentation of uh, personnel, extension of time by providing 24 by 7 construction work hours. The additional delay may be because of the awarding of certain packages, meaning there are more than one contract package to a point and to be awarded. So meaning if uh, there will be delay on the awarding of a certain project, uh, definitely it will affect the integration of other contract packages since the functionality of the whole project means that all of these contract packages should be testing and commissioning all at the same time. How many stations are planned for the North-South Commuter Railway and what criteria were considered in selecting their locations? We have a total of 36 uh, for these stations. Now, the how, how these have been chosen, I have um, no information. However, if you see the strategic uh, locations or the stations, um, I believe that uh, it was chosen due to the proximity to uh, commuters. So if we look into one package, for example, CP01, it will be crossing the boundaries of Metro Manila and the province of Bulacan, namely the West Valenzuela Station, Mekawayan, Marilao, and Bokawe.